Hello and welcome to the Daily Mill for Thursday, 22nd of February 2024. In today's Mill news, we have a trio of pieces uh, about what Neil Harris has said in uh, probably today and yesterday. Uh, I think today they do the pre match press conferences. Um, so let's ha uh, have a look and see what was said. So this is from southernnews.co.uk. Uh, Mills Neil Harris on his evolution. Uh, not Jurgen Klopp, but I can galvanise the club. Uh, Neil Harris has joked the club haven't appointed Jurgen Klopp as boss, but insists he is a different person with a completely evolved knowledge of football as he returned this week after more than four years away. Harris was appointed head coach of Millwall on Wednesday after the club sacked Joe Edwards. The Lions are just one point above the relegation zone after six defeats in their last seven championship matches. Uh, Harris resigned as Lions manager in October 2019 after leading them back into the second tier at the second attempt, going close to the championship playoffs in 2018 uh, and reaching two FA Cup quarterfinals. After leaving the den, Harris took over at Cardiff City in November 2019 and led them to the playoff semi-finals where they lost to Fulham. Uh, Harris was in charge of Gillingham from January 22 to October 23 and was appointed at Cambridge United in December. Uh, his last match in charge of Cambridge was their 2-1 defeat at home to Bolton Wanderers on Tuesday before Mill made an official approach and compensation was agreed. Uh, one thing I want to uh, say, I didn't say it yesterday. Um, everyone's going, oh, where, where was he managing? Where was he managing? He was at fucking Gillingham, Cambridge. Um, the reason why he was at Gillingham, Cambridge is because they are close in location to where he lives. And I would imagine after the Cardiff, after a Cardiff job, he probably wanted to be closer to home. So that's why he was at Gillingham and at Cardiff. Well, at Gillingham and at Cambridge. Because they're close, they're within commuting distance of where he lives. I I assume in South somewhere in South Essex. Um so you know, there was a choice made there. If he wanted to push it, he could have pushed it. And he could have got another job in the championship. So let's not let's not like um start laying out accusations of like, oh he was at Gin and he was at Cambridge. There's a reason behind it and it's quite an obvious reason uh, if you uh, think about it. It means Harris will have managed in League 2, League 1 and the Championship in the same season after he was in the dugout against Southampton on Saturday. I'm still the same human being I was. Oh, I'm still caring. I'm still a husband. I'm still a father. I'm still a son. I'm still the same person the players can turn to in terms of adversity. I've got that humanity uh, side to me, Harris said on Mule TV when asked how he had changed. But I'm a different character around the pitch, uh, football pitch. When I was here last time, I only lived uh, life as a Millwall manager. I've now spent 18 months in South Wales, spent time in League 1 and League 2. I've watched a lot of people work, I've visited a lot of training grounds. I'm a different person, uh, my knowledge of football has completely evolved. Uh, I've not changed my beliefs too much, uh, all of a sudden Jerk and Klopp's not walking in the building. But I'm different now, I'm, I'm a lot more adaptable than I was. Uh, I leave Cambridge with a real heavy art, but even there in 11 weeks I learned a lot. I'm looking forward to using that knowledge here. Harris will be familiar with a number of the squad. He signed Bartos Biakowski, Sean Hudson, Jake Cooper, Murray Wallace, Ryan Leonard, Jules Savile and Tom Bradshaw. Harris also brought through Danny McNamara and Billy Mitchell giving a debut to the latter. Harris said, I've watched this group uh, develop over a period of time. A lot of the players I signed personally. I, I know we've moved on a few years since, but then uh, I, I know the mentality and capability of these individuals, what they can do and what they can't do. And it's down to me to, to get the best out of them like I did previously. Uh, the new players have come in, I've seen a lot of them as well. And there's some really good talent there, uh, from what I've heard, some really good characters as well. And maybe they just need harnessing in, in the middle way to be the best that they can. Uh, I know a lot of the staff and how to get the best out of them. Uh, I know how to galvanise the football club. I've done it before and I can do it again. Exactly, exactly, very much so. Um, so yeah, uh, there you go. Uh, Bartos Piaskowski, that's interesting. Will he be brought back in? Because we do need a shot stopper, not a flip flapper, ball kicker as a goalkeeper. Um, so yeah, there you go. Now, obviously, he hasn't been at, he hasn't been in the Chelsea academy uh, managing children, so uh, he, he's not he's not that good, is he? So uh, you know. Uh, moving on to this from LondonNewsOnline.co.uk, uh, Neil Harris determined to help James Belson achieve his vision for Millwall. Uh, Neil Harris is determined to help Millwall owner James Wilson achieve his vision for the Championship Club. Harris returned to the Lions yesterday as manager 
the South Londoners moving quickly to seal a return of their former boss after sacking Joe Edwards. The 46-year-old who holds Mill's all-time scoring record quit Cambridge United to take on the challenge at the Den. Harris won promotion as boss in 2017 from League One and had a special bond with John Belson who was killed in the car accident on July the 4th last year. Uh, Berylson's son James has replaced his father as chairman and been a regular in attendance at matches this season. Oh, I had a, a wonderful uh, personal relationship with John, but an amazing working relationship with him as, as well, Harris told the South London Press. I've said so many times after his passing that he was not just a, a boss to me, he was a friend, uh, an ally, and someone I've been heavily on, rely, rely on heavily for an opinion for many, many years on different aspects of my life. Uh, but I've known Jimmy a, a very long time also, over the years at the football club. I look forward to building that working relationship that's been present. Uh, when Jimmy's been a board member over the, the years of my first tenure, I look forward to building that owner-coach relationship because we get on extremely well. Uh, we will work extremely well together. I know what Jimmy's philosophy is for the football club, what he wants and how he wants it done. And I look forward to helping build that. And the pictures ain't loaded for some reason. Harris's first match back in control of the Lions is uh, at Southampton on Saturday. The Lions are winless in seven matches and have lost six of those. There are 13 games remaining, six at the Den. Lovely jubbly. The Mills pull clear of danger and secure on the eighth successive campaign in England's second tier. It's all about a short and mid-term for me at the football club now, said Harris. Uh, my role coming in today is to make sure that the, uh, the day I leave the football club is in a better position than when I took over. And that's the, the, my philosophy for the position. Uh, that starts today, but now, but the short-termism of the job is getting through the next 48 hours at Southampton as a target. And believe it or not, the mid-term has to be between now and the end of the season, a 30-game mini-league. Uh... We can't forget what's gone on in the first 33 games. We have to embrace and understand that. But the importance is uh, what's coming in front of us. Uh, we have a men mental task of going to St Mary's on Saturday for my first game in charge. But I look forward to that challenge. Then it's about the 12 games afterwards to make sure we galvanise the players and game enough points between now and the end of the season to make sure we're in the championship next season. Absolutely. And you can see tomorrow's South London Press for more in-depth and unrivaled mill coverage. As in the actual paper. You know, paper? They used to make things out of paper. That gets published on a Friday, and you can pick it up uh, across the South London area. Uh, I think you can subscribe to, and get posted to you as well, I'm not too sure. Um, uh, now, moving back to the Sava news. Uh, Mill boss bullish about chances against Southampton as he has a message for players and staff. So, here we go. Uh, Mill head coach Neil Harris says it doesn't get much tougher. Than Southampton this weekend, but is bullish about his side's prospects at St Mary's. The Lions head to a Saints side that won their previous 11 home games in a row before their defeat to Hull City this week. Millwall are a point above the bottom three. All the players have to take responsibility, and I'm part of that. I'm the leader now. I take responsibility with the players," said Harris on the Millwall TV. Uh, what what's gone? You can't forget. You have to, you you can't ignore the league table, but that has to be in the back of your mind. Uh, but we have to move forward, and uh, we have to focus on the weekend. Uh, could I have a much tougher challenge in my first game back? No, uh, I'm going to be standing on that side. I'm leading the troops, and that's the main thing for me. I'll be standing there, chest out, shoulders back, so I'm, I'm excited by it. It's a tough encounter, but one we're capable of going and getting a result, and certainly a performance. Then we go back to the den next week. Uh, it's going to be a quick turnaround between now and Saturday's game, and I'm going to need to lean on the staff that are here. And I'm going to have to rely on changing room as well, and I'm going to have to rely on leadership. And I demand leadership in the changing room. I'm going to rely on them to put in a performance. Uh, then we've got a week leading into Watford. Former teammates David Livermore and Andy Marshall on Harris's coaching team, as well as Alan Barrett, who Harris brought to the club. Harris said, uh, You're talking about Millwall people. Uh, you're talking about Marshall. I've played a lot with football with him. I've known him a long time. I know his character. I know what he thinks of the football club and what he'll bring. Uh, Adam's been here seven years now. He had a huge success when I was here last time. But Adam's a top, top character and he cares deeply about this football club. And live as he knows me, he knows the football club. He's got in his DNA as well as I have. Uh, he brings that passion and that drive. Uh, fresh ideas as well. We've been in the, we've uh, not been in the building for five years. David will have fresh ideas now and have a different take. It's important to have people here that have worked here for a long time. And we've got that. It's fresh impetus and we look forward to, to Saturday. Harris added, there's going to be highs and, and lows over the coming weeks. So and my, fo my focus is to make sure... Uh, that between now and the start of May, we're the best we can be. And I'm the best version of me as a coach and a manager. And I'll do my best for this football club. I promise the football club that. And the fan base. As you can tell, I've got the burning passion in me to drive it. And I will drive it. And I'll, I'll galvanise everybody. Uh, we've got a fight in front of us. We've got a challenge in front of us. 
uh, the players are good enough. Uh, it's down to me to give them the confidence and belief to do that. That is absolutely fantastic. That is absolutely what you want to hear, is it not? I mean, fucking hell, sign me up. I'll, I'll go down there and put my boots on. What do you, where do you want me? That is fantastic stuff, man. Um, so we're going to finish with this. We've got some photographs, pictures, selfies, as the kids call them now, even though they're not selfies. They just think all photographs are selfies, so... Uh, this is from yesterday's 1-1 one, one draw after extra time in the FA Youth Cup, which me all won on penalty spot kicks. 4-2 on the night. Lovely jubbly. Into the semi-finals. We go. And these are the photographs here. Um, I don't really know these players that much, because obviously it's under 18. I don't go on Saturday mornings to watch them. Uh, you see the odd clip. Um, you hear the odd name on a piece of paper. And then you watch the odd game of the FA Youth Cup, and that's about it. Um, so here you go. I think that's Oleg Bodie. I think that's Stevenson. I'm not sure. Not sure who that is. Um, I think that's O'Boyle, but I think that's just because he's ginger. Uh, I'm not sure who that is. I think that might be Massey. He plays a bit for the under 21, so I think that is Massey. Um, not sure who that is. There you go again. There's there's all three of them. There, Mansour is the one in the middle there. I'm pretty sure number two. Um, I'm not sure Stevenson as well. He's the captain. He's the one with a white armband. Um, I think that's Howland. That's the number nine who had the two really good chances, and he pulled up at the end. I don't think he was signed up for the penalty kicks because he was injured. They were literally carrying him off the pitch, and then they made him go back because they did a huddle at the end. Um, but yeah, he they were all like all cramped. It's funny when you watch these games and they go to extra time. These kids, like there is a physicality difference. They cramp up at the end of the game. So there was like loads of them on the floor, six of them, not just us with Chelsea as well. So you know, it's it's a lot. It's a put. They put a lot of effort into it. They they really do um, get on it. So it is really like a lot of effort there. Um, so there you go. This is, at, I think, at the end of full time. Uh, I think. This is uh, probably uh, the injury time. That was a substitute. Uh, so I could probably figure out who that was. That was a sub who came on number 16, I think. Got lucky because he gave the ball. He tried, He did a bit of a trick. And then he should have passed it. And uh, as you know, all right, we have players in the first team that do so that they get, well, they get away with one trick. And they try and do another one straight after. And they always end up losing the ball. But one, don't push it. If you if you if you if you get away with one trick and you've come out with the ball, and then you might just pass it. Do something with it. Um, these are the spot kicks, I believe. There's a penny in goal, Albert Penny. He made one save, and I think one other thing was missed. And Mill scored all of the penalties. So fantastic stuff there. And there you go. A bit of a Calvin Klein ad there. What was that Calvin Klein? Uh, yeah. And the Chelsea goalkeeper was being a bit of a prick. Uh, was it? Oh, well, the player with the dreads. I think that's Cavalli Abel. Yeah, I remember now. Because the goalkeeper, their goalkeeper, threw the ball over Cavalli Abel. And, and then someone had to go and get it and give it back to him. And I think the ref said, look, you fucking do that again. I'm going to send you off or something, something like that. Because then he just he didn't stop it. What he did was he, he would get the ball and then go up to his own player afterwards, give it to him. And go off to the side to uh, to sit and wait. But there you go. There's the moment. Uh, they all going crazy and celebrating. Fantastic stuff. The last penalty was actually missed by the Chelsea player. Put it over, and that was it. Win, win, win. Into the semis. There you go. There's the other. Fantastic stuff, man. Absolutely brilliant. Proper Millwall performance from the under 18s. Then we're back round to the start of the game. So yeah, um, that was it. Now, a few things. I've had a little look at the rules. I downloaded them and had a look. I haven't brought them up because it's just word salad. I just control f it and, and search for final. Uh, the semi-final, it's drawn and it's literally home and away. So whoever gets drawn at home is going to be at home. So the next game could be at the Den. And like I showed you yesterday in yesterday's video, uh, it could be we're waiting for the games to be played. There's going to be a game played on Saturday. Um, but I think the draw, the draws take place on Friday. I don't think it's this Friday. It might be the Friday after. Um, 
So we could get Man City, we could get Tottenham, we could get Liverpool, Leeds, or we could get Bristol City or Swindon. Obviously, we want to get Bristol City or Swindon at home. That would be good. Um, so yeah, that's going to be a home and a home. That's going to be just a drawn game, one-off game, and whoever gets drawn at home gets gets at home. Now the final, back in the day, I don't know when they changed it, the final used to be two-legged. Um, so you would get an even chance. I don't know when they changed it, but they're going to draw the final. What do you mean draw the final? There's two teams in it. You know who's in it. No, they're going to draw the final for home and away. So the final could be played at Millwall, but let's not count the chickens. There's a long way to go before then. So the final could be at Millwall. And it could be against Liverpool, it could be against Man City, it could be against Tottenham, or it could be away at any of those teams as well. Um, and reading the the, the, the rules, the download now rules, um, Mill, or if the game is at the Den, the final, uh, the club who's hosting the final must produce a programme. So we will see a short return of the programme, because it's in the rules, and they have to do it. Now they, I don't. It doesn't specify how many they have to make, so they could be a, they could be bastards with it and make like a thousand, or they could uh, make enough. I guess it depends on how many tickets you're selling. I would imagine for the final of the FA Youth Cup at the Den, that you could get a crowd of ten thousand for that. Um, genuinely believe that, especially if you have. One of the big teams, the Man City, Spurs, or Liverpool, at maybe even fifteen. To be honest, you, yeah. I think they have those teams have enough followers in London that will go to the game, and you could fill up the away stand. Uh, you could have then the West Stand open, West Upper, and the South Upper and Lower. Um, so you could have ten thousand. Um, so then. Who knows how many programs, if, if it is 10,000 tickets on sale, who knows how many uh, programs they'll sell. Uh, but again, if you if you are a collector of mill programs, like I said, counting on the chickens, let's not do that. Let's not uh, attempt fate. But if mill will get to the final and the final is at the den, they will have to make a program for that game. So there you go. And on that note, thank you for watching and goodbye.